you can already see there's a little folding upward which makes the smile more look nice. That's a big improvement. Good day everyone! I am Dr. Arki De Leon, the dental architect. And today, we will have our special topic which is dermofillers. I'm not really that aware of this topic yet <laughs> but uh, Dr. Ivona Eger is with us. Okay, we've already discussed Botox with our part 1 of this video. So this is part 2 for dermofillers. So it will help us understand not just for the patients and also for the dentist and other physician on how the dermofillers work. Good afternoon here and good morning to you, Dr. Ivona. Good morning in UK and good afternoon in Philippines. Hi, Dr. Arki. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, welcome back for our part two. So I think we're going to talk about dermofillers. Okay, so what is a dermofiller? Well, telling you very, very simply, der dermofillers are nothing different than sugar and water mixed together into a syringe, which is then cross-linked and injected into our face. So, so basic of hyaluronic acid is sugar and water. Really so this is what we are injecting in our patients. Before, I, I myself, when I hear fillers, I always think silicone, I always think uh, plastic collagen type of material. But this dermofiller of yours is just made out of sugar and water. So that's really yeah. amazing. So what's the, it's <laughs> what's the difference of this filler of yours with the usual silicone or other collagen type of synthetic material that other doctors use? So we don't want anything unnatural under our patient's skin. So whatever we want to use has first to be very, very safe, then has to be biocompatible with our skin, skin cells itself. So hyaluronic acid we, we can find in intracellular matrix. This is just something what we add from outside, which is done with DNA technology in different labs in the world. And then it's blended with what we have already under our skin. And in that way, we get a beautiful implants which don't have a membrane like the other implants of silicone or whatever you were mentioning before and we get a very natural blend and something which we can mold with our hands and provocate a beautiful beautiful results also dermal filler has to be temporary i mean there are a lot of them on the market but i'm advising always the temporary one because our skin is aging as well our cells are aging as well so it's kind of weird to have some cheekbones somewhere there or very big lips and the other part of the face is getting aged so we want really biocompatible and safe materials yes but how long how long has been this then dermofillers of using hyaluronic acid the technology how long has it been here uh, the technology is again very very long on the market i would say that hyaluronic acid we were using in ophthalmology for a long long time and all these biggest world biotechs three of them are in europe from ophthalmological field started to get into the field of facial aesthetics around 2000 year 2000 2000 2001. So mm -hmm. I think it's enough of the medical trials behind. I myself work in biotech industry. So every single high quality dermal filler in the world has a lot of scientific support behind it. So the medical devices are very, very safe. Yeah. The crucial part is after we choose a safe and good quality medical device is how to inject it in which part of skin layer and what kind of filler goes in which part of the face. So this is very nice because it's already tried and tested. When it comes to your filler, does it have any precautions or contraindications that you can apply to the patients? Well, yeah, that's a great question, <laughs> Dr. Arki. So there are basically no contraindications if we talk about high-end quality hyaluronic acid dermal fillers, right? Because silicones or collagen fillers, they can always cause allergies. So they are not safe mm -hmm. as hyaluronic acid dermal fillers. So contraindications could be if the woman is breastfeeding, if the woman is pregnant, mm -hmm. a partial contraindication indications some autoimmune diseases but still we can inject we just know how to treat the patient problems with coagulation so blood coagulation so again we have to put the patient off certain medication and then inject and then bring the patient on certain medication so that's a medical field and we need to take a good anamnesis to understand the medical history of our patients and on that way we act with dermal fillers but basically there is no contraindication uh, only thing what I personally find a contraindication when I can't 
doesn't reach the aesthetic uh, mm. aesthetic goals of my patient. Oh, so when I think that the patient, you know, has sometimes they have some weird expectations or weird goals, or they're maybe better for plastic surgery, this is for me contraindication. Body dysmorphia of patient, more of those kind of issues than really a medical problem that so they that, are carrying and we can't inject. Yeah, so the contraindications are the impossible expectation. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you have to know when the things go <laughs> into the direction of impossible. Because sometimes you have patients who really have... Bone structure yeah. is still a major Imp factor. Yeah, their bone structures are not supporting the expectations. <laughs> so how about yeah. in dentistry? Where where can we apply them or fillers when it comes to dentistry? Well, everywhere. So let's talk about smile. We can enhance the lips. We can lift up lip corners. We can project the chins. Mm -hmm. We can enhance the mandibular line. We can do the nasal labial folds. We can also sometimes treat black triangles. That's a always discussion around it. But when we have the right indication, as I told you before, I come from periodontal medical dental background. We can also do a lot for enhancing of the gums. A lot of, again, different indications. Can, can we see some examples of your work? Yeah. So like, I yeah. inject it into, into nasal labial folds. I inject it into the lip corners. I inject it into the body of the lip and I lift it. This lip corners, you see how the patient immediately looks much nicer, much much softer when you inject nasolabial fold, marionetta lines. You kind of remove the age because lips do age as all the other parts of our body, right? When we age, nasolabial fold becomes more prominent. When we age, marionetta lines become stronger and lip corners are tend to turn uh, downwards. And so right. this is all what we have to correct. Yeah, I can see, I can already see the there's a little folding upward in the lips which is yeah which makes the smile more look nice because when you draw a smile you always have that fold upward and downward yeah but look at the first picture is only downward that's a big improvement was yeah. this combined with botox or it's just fillers on this picture? this is done only with fillers yeah, how about mm -hmm. this one so uh, this one is a combination of botulinum toxin and fillers we see that here this lady had quite reverted lip corners mm -hmm. so i had to knock down with botulinum toxin the Presser anguli oris muscle to lift up her lip corners and tiny bit because they, she was scared of having bigger lips, tiny bit enhance the vermilion border and the cupid bow of, of her upper lip. Ah, it's because the, the lips is too thin. Yes, a bit too thin. I would say the vermilion border was not pronounced well. It's like because when we, when some girls, I woman, uh, uses makeup, they try to make an illusion where their lips is like heart shaped on the vermilion border border where it looks like a Betty Boop's lips, right? A Betty Boop's uh, yeah. They yeah. Want and so this one you can achieve without any lipstick. It's like a permanent makeup that you will shape in your lips very nicely. Exactly. Precisely so. So you can you can be beautiful also without makeup and reshape your lips. Yeah. So make different shapes to your lips. Open your lips. Let's say also flip your lips which is really, really nice. And again, done in the blink of the eye maybe mm -hmm. lips swell more than the other parts of the body but not not too much so our patients are happily coming for the lunch break treatments from their offices injecting their lips and going back work so it's nothing really major happening there major problem is when you have to repair the incisors and when you give dental block then you have bigger distortion of the lip then after injecting lips themselves with these new techniques nowadays and dermal fillers ah because it's gonna be stretched yes so is there any maintenance on this will, will it be absolutely absorbed after a few months or after a year? Well, abs yeah, absorption is always up to our metabolism, but usually I, I would say lips are durable around nine months. I and know. then after that, they need a little bit of retouch. But what we see, every one of us who works long time with, with fillers, is that at some point, it's like a muscle memory. So the fat tissue has its own memory and you don't need to top up so much. You can top up much less and the results will get more stable. Ah, so it's like at your first top up it's nine months your second top yeah. up it can be in two years then it's well longer in two years and a half and yeah usually go somehow like that yeah oh, that's nice because of the muscle memory and usually yeah. you already expanded the tissues which will stay for longer yeah any more example uh-huh yeah yeah this is again progenia so she has a very very strong mandibular bone you see and her bone overgrowth is this is the class three and how to correct it on a way because her lower lip is positioned in front of her upper lip. So I had to reach 
shut her lips and I had to add the volume in the lower facial third on the way that I get a constant line on her jaw so that she can look more smooth or more feminine because progenia or the class 3 is making female faces look more masculine. I think I have so many patients like this where the bone of the jaw, progenia for our audience is where the, there's an overgrowth of the jaw. So yeah. sometimes because it's a bone problem, we cannot yeah. address it anymore. Even though we do orthodontics because it's a late orthodontics, it's, the patient is already too old for more bone movement, we can no longer protrude. So this is a good way. I think I have so how many to... patients that can be treated this way. Where yes, I... how to camouflage the problem. Yeah. yeah, same as this girl. Let's go back to her. Sorry, let me... So that's the girl. She also had progenia, but in some later stages, you can fine-tune her face. So she had a bit problem with the nose, with the mid face, and with her overgrowth of mandibula. But then later on, you see this after, after I did a lot of little tiny optimization of her mid and lower face, she looks very, very nice. And at the beginning, we started somehow like this. So again, correction, because she's too old, she's in her 30s already, so we can't do anything anymore with bone. her. So if you cannot touch the bone, you touch the muscle. and the... Muscle, you touch the fat pad, and then you can get the beautiful corrections there. So these lips, that's a beautiful example of how dermal filler can somehow address the problem of tissue loss. In the upper face, this girl was bitten by a dog, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of issues where the tissue is lost. Sometimes it's also degenerative or in a cleft palate, you have a lot of problems. Again, it can be a dental associated clinical issue and you can nicely treat that with dermal fillers. Add up volume, get into more symmetry in the upper and the lower lip, etc. Absolute symmetry does not exist when we talk about soft tissues. So when we talk about heart tissues and teeth, we can get into better and, and bone, we can get in better and easier symmetry than talking with the soft tissues. So absolute symmetry here, we can't achieve and it's crazy just to uh, work and, and try to achieve it. So, so even the, the, the symptoms of the cleft palate can be uh, enhanced with this kind of treatments because we know that cleft palate kids are treated since they are born till the age of 23-4 with constant surgeries and somehow everything could be treated but at the end if you want this fine tuning and beautifying of their lips especially upper lip and the area around philtrum under the nose this we can fine tune and make beautiful only with dermal fillers. Because sometimes scarring makes the tissue thinner so we'll get, yes. we'll make it thicker again because of the fillers. Yeah, because of keloid scarring and also because of rolling in of the soft tissues. Scars can be very, very heavy and on that way, the weight of a scar is on a way connected with the bad aesthetic results as well. So thank you so much for these cases. Any more conclusion about dental fillers? Any myth-busting information where we can share to our audience on what fillers can do? So to conclude all this beautiful world of facial aesthetics and here dermal fillers, we can say that fillers we can use in treating symptoms of aging like strong nasolabial folds infraorbital area can age very very quickly then marionette lines so to fill into the gaps which are like symptoms of aging on our faces then fillers we can use to correct certain anomalies like cleft palate like when we need to augment or add the tissues when they are lost like this patient of our of mine who, who was bitten by a dog then we can also protrude the lower lower facial third when we have cases like a retrusion, the mandibular retrusion, we can correct or camouflage and make nicer every progenia by adding into mid phase, adding volume into mid phase, which is usually progenic people and progenic profiles have a tissue fat pad loss in the mid phase area and correcting it. We can balance profiles. So there are a lot of lot of different applications and beautifications in the lower facial third. So for our audience, anything you want to buff buff up, we can do it with the fillers. I think that's what Dr. Ivona is saying. Okay, so again, thank you so much again for our part two, Dr. Ivona. Some parts of the fillers are discussed in our part one, so you can watch that again. It's going to be in the link below. So again, for the dentists and other physicians who want to enroll in the program of Dr. Ivona, you can see the details on the description below. Again, I'm Dr. Arki De Leon with Dr. Ivona, and we would like to thank you for watching, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and God bless. See you soon on Philippines. Bye. Cheers.